Welcome to another episode of One Step Ahead, our referee development program. This episode focuses on rule clarity to achieve common application. So we all know that there are many different interpretations and applications of our rules. This video is designed to assist us all in ensuring that we're on the same page. So in this video, we will look at six different key areas. So these six areas we believe are those that are least in common in our application across the rules. So we have possession, onside, try line, the touch, interchanging, and the drop off. So possession refers to the player or team that has control of the ball. So you'll note that we have that at the top as a definition straight from the rule book. So the team with the ball is entitled to six touches prior to a change of possession. We should all know that. From the change of possession due to an intercept, the first touch will be zero touch. Most of us are doing that well now. Following the sixth touch or a loss of possession due to any other means, the ball must be returned to the mark without delay. So that doesn't mean it's thrown up in the air to the player, it doesn't mean it's rolled across the ground in an effort to slow things down, it doesn't mean it's thrown to someone willy-nilly away from the mark. It can be given directly to another player who then brings it back to a mark, that's fine, but we need to ensure that there's no delay in that ball being returned to the mark. If there is, obviously then we march 10 metres and give a penalty to the team who has not offended, so who is waiting for possession to be returned to them. So onside is simply a position whereby a player may legitimately become involved with the play. So all that simply means is a player is offside until they are onside. A player is onside once they are in line with or behind the on-field referee, or where that referee has set their seven or 10 meters, depending on whether it's a roll ball or a tap for a penalty. There has been much discussion around players changing direction, which is an old rule in terms of defenders. Quite simply, the player is offside until they're onside. Let's keep it simple. If you believe that a defender has made every effort to get onside and has changed direction a couple of times, but hasn't impacted on the attacker, that's fine, play on. If you believe that they have obstructed or interfered with the attacker, then try to play advantage as much as possible. But if you need to come back for a penalty, feel free to do so. Okay. Please keep in mind we are looking at the best outcomes of the game when we're doing this. So any chance that we can play advantage is a good opportunity in the game. So on the try line, the player must get both feet on or behind the try line, not just one, and have no part of the body in contact with the ground forward of the try line. So it doesn't mean they can crouch down with their arms forward ready to sprint out. And it doesn't mean they can have one foot on like in league. They must have two feet on or behind the try line. Another thing that I've seen in some instances is players retreating a long way back behind the try line so that as they're moving forward, they only get to the try line when the touch is made. This is not okay. It's an unreasonable distance behind the try line. So we need to encourage players to do the right thing because that's not in the spirit of the game. You can penalize for that, but I would suggest ensuring that you're just talking, communicating with them and talking them out of doing that multiple times in a row. If they continue to ignore you and unfortunately do the wrong thing, then that's when you would have to blow a penalty. Again, remember, best outcomes of the game is what we're all about. And ensure that there is not an obstruction or interference with an attacking player or the rubble. So something that we need to ensure that we're getting right is where that mark would be in those instances. So if there is a penalty coming from an infringement in the touch, so prior to the roll ball, that is the mark where the ball is. If the ball has rolled and then there's the obstruction or interference, the penalty is an offside penalty and that needs to come forward to the seven meter mark. Try line. The line separating the in-goal area from the field of play, we all know that. The try is awarded when a player other than the half places the ball on or over the try line without being touched. Okay. In attempting to score a try, a player must have control of the ball prior to placing it on or over the try line. They can't just dive and ground it from above like they can in league. That's simply because our game doesn't allow the ball to go to ground and bounce around. The ball is placed and released short of the try line. It counts as a touch. Now, if it's the fifth touch, then obviously that's a change over on six. Any other time they come back to the seven meters and they roll the ball on whatever touch count that would be. So say they put it down on touch three, they roll the ball on touch four. If, however, the ball is placed short of the try line but not released, the player can continue and can actually put the ball down again over the try line so that they score that try. So hopefully we're communicating all of this as they go to assist them in trying to get it down in the right spot because no player tries to score a try prior to the try line. They've just made a mistake in where that try line actually is. So communication is key there and supporting them to get, again, the best outcomes of the game. The touch then, 
any contact between the player in possession and the defending player. Yeah, so a touch may be made by a defending player or the player in possession. If they are touched in goal, they return out to the seven meters and commence with a roll ball. If a player in possession intentionally makes a touch on an offside defender who is making every effort to retire and remain out of play, the touch counts. So half scoots through, for example, puts their arm out to push the player out of the way. They have made a touch intentionally on that offside defender. So that means half is caught is our ruling. Be mindful that that rule is all about intentionally making a touch, not brushing past by trying to get through. This brings us to the touch and the try line. Dropping early and pulling out of a touch, perhaps the most contentious rule, decision, understanding of the rule um, that we currently have. So when a player from the defending team enters its defensive seven metre zone, we all know the defending team must move forward at a reasonable pace until the touch is imminent or made. Imminent means it is most likely to occur. The touch is most likely to occur. Doesn't mean it is definitely going to occur. So as soon as the defender and the attacker believe the touch is going to occur, most likely going to occur, they may drop, the defense may drop back. This may lead to an attacker rolling the ball thinking that they're about to be touched and them not being touched. Now, when a player in possession enters the defending team's seven meter zone, the defending team is not obliged to move forward anymore, but they cannot retire back towards their try line again until the touch is imminent or made. So there is no such thing as pulling out of a touch in terms of the rule book. Yes, we may not believe that it's in the best interest of the game or the spirit of the game, but that's not up to us to decide. What we need to ensure is that players are moving forward at a reasonable pace when they're in the zone. So when the defense is in the seven meter zone, but the attack is outside of it, continuing to move forward until such time as a touch is made, a touch is imminent, they score a try or they lose possession. We are no longer looking for players pulling out of a touch to give a penalty. We are looking for is a touch made before a roll ball occurs or not. It's that simple. Then we're also looking for do players drop early so before the touch is imminent. Generally speaking in that we're looking at the links because they're the ones wanting to get back on side while the middle's up making the touch so that they can then shut down the next play. But it can be any player that we're looking at. In that, please, please, please preload. Use our communication as much as we can to avoid giving penalties in this zone. We don't want to block the game up and, and, and cut it all up. We want it to be open and free playing. So as much as we can, communicate, communicate, communicate. Interchanging. The act of an on-field player leaving the field of play to be replaced by an off-field player entering the field of play. Now, players may interchange at any time apart from when the below occurs. Okay, so they can interchange as many times as they want in the game. They need to get to the interchange area or sub box, as most people call it, prior to the player coming on. One play goes off, one play comes on. Pretty simple, keeps it at six on the field. However, when an intercept occurs or a line break is made, players are not permitted to interchange until the next touch has been made or becomes dead. Yeah, so a touch is made, they run out, they drop the ball, they score a try. Any of those instances mean then interchanges can occur. Now, if a player is already interchanging as that happens, that's fine. It's if they're interchanging in an attempt to basically take advantage of that situation. So cut down the player by you know, coming off at one end of the sub box, coming on at the other, that kind of thing. Players must enter the field of play after the on-field player they are replacing enters the interchange area. As we know, if they get to the interchange area and they're swapping at the same time, that's cool, that's allowable. What we want to make sure that we're doing is if we have our off-field referee controlling the interchange area, we should be able to minimize, if not get rid of, seven on at some point in time. That's our goal. The drop-off then. So the drop-off is a procedure used to determine a winner following equal scores at the expiration of normal duration. So all that means is we get to the end of the game, it's a preliminary final, semi-final, quarter-final, grand final, and the scores are tied. Referee puts the hand up, waits for confirmation that they have a drop off. They have one minute to organize the players. And we have four and four in a mixed situation. They may, may be no more than two males on the field at any time during the drop off on each team. We then play for two minutes continuous. If there is a winner at this point in time, the game is over. The team with the scores leading the other team are uh, the designated winner 
if our scores are still equal, we continue three on three until someone scores a try. As soon as one team scores a try in that instance, they are declared the winner and the game's over. There are no other elements to a drop off that you need to know. So we're gonna look at a couple of videos. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to just watch them and then I'm gonna give you some feedback and comment. What I want you to know is that all we're looking for is what is happening in the game and what is our ruling basically. So it's just about awareness. Some of you may have realized what's happened so far. Some of you may not have yet. And the situation is now rectified. So, if you don't notice the first time, let's have a look at it. So the players are coming up for a penalty tap. We're going to rock to the box subset in essence so we have one two three players leaving the field he's had one two in the back come on two in the front come on so three off and four on so there should be seven one two three four five six seven the referee didn't have a sideline referee on that side of the field only on this side in this instance so it means that the on-field referee needs to be aware of that as does the sideline referee so we need to be able to count those players across as we're concentrating on every other element of the game Sometimes this is hard because there's multiple things happening, but it's really important we get that right. Video two. So same thing, I'll play it through, see if you can pick up what's happened, and then we'll talk about it. So I'm assuming you all saw the foot in the roll ball. So what you need to decide in that instance is, did it hit the foot before the ball was rolled? Did it hit the foot after the ball was rolled? If it's beforehand, the player is impinging on the roll ball itself. So the mark is where they're tapping it right now. If it is post the ball being rolled, then they are offside and it should be seven meters forward. So have another look at it. To be clear what happened there so the ball had already been rolled in the roll ball they should have been on side so the ball or the mark for the ball should have gone forward seven meters so somewhere around the dotted line that you can see on the left hand side of the video third and final video check so same thing i'll play it and then we'll come back and have a look Hopefully what you've picked up on is that the half scoots through, puts their arm out to the defender, initiates a touch. Let's have a look at it. So here we go, scoots through, right arm out, pushes on number 10 in blue, half court. So an intentional touch was made by the attacker in an effort to get through. They didn't have to put their hand out, they could have kept running. They chose to do that. So therefore that is a touch counted. So hopefully in the 15 minutes or thereabouts that this video is played for, you've had a chance to see some clarity in some of the rules that maybe weren't so obvious. Um, and we can then have a more common approach in the future from all of our referees. So hopefully this helped. Um, any questions, as always, please ensure that you communicate with us, talk to us. Um, if you have any advice for us, please feel free to send it through. There's my details at the bottom. I'm more than happy to post any number of videos on any topics. 
including more video analysis type stuff just so that we can see what's happening but wish you all the best good luck with your refereeing and thank you for listening